Good morning. Happy Monday. Good morning. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. Uh, today we're starting week 14. Can you believe it? Time flies when you're having fun, right? Wow. Three weeks left before we finish our first semester. 100% online. Hope things are going well with you guys. I hope you're keeping up. I hope you're reaching out to your teachers when you need clarification. Uh, for us this week, for listening and speaking, I want to spend pretty much the entire week doing a our performance task. Okay, We're going to do a performance task for Unit 4. This week, we're going to focus on technology, and I think this is an appropriate topic this week, the topic of technology, to reflect. We're getting close to the end of the semester. This has been new for all of us, including your teachers. It's in introduced some challenges for everyone trying to interact, trying to interact with the content, to access the content. So what I want to do today is to give you an idea about what I would like to focus on this week in this performance task. And it's going to be highly reflexive. It's going to be asking for your opinions, to share your opinions about technology. It's going to require, of course, teamwork. And that's always a challenge in any type of situation whether it's in school or in real life, working together with others can sometimes be a challenge. So it's very important this week that we work together. We being you and I as your instructor, as well as we as and you guys as classmates working together, communicating with each other, trying to overcome some of the challenges that you that you might face with technology trying to connect we're going to have <clears throat> as always i'm going to try to allow as much time as possible in class to do the activities but this might require outside work if you're not able to complete the tasks in class so i want to give you kind of an idea about what we're going to do and this is going to be kind of a task-based approach. There's going to be many tasks involved. So I'm going to give you an overview. I'm going to tell you now what we're going to do by the end of the week. But this is not something that we're going to finish, nor should we finish today or tomorrow or even Wednesday. We really need to spend the entire week to work together to complete the task. But let me tell you now what the task is is going to be. And again, um, if it's not 100% clear at today, right, don't worry, right, we'll keep talking about it and clarifying and doing a lot of smaller tasks in order to complete the bigger overall task. So what are we going to do? What is going to be our performance task for this week? Well, we're going to combine the idea of technology, I'm going to use the term information and communication technologies, abbreviated ICTs. Okay, so we've been using, you guys have been using ICTs, information and communication technologies, throughout the, uh, the semester, right? Out of necessity, out of uh, maybe preference in some cases, if you've had a choice to decide on which technologies. So we're going to combine this idea of technologies with our reflection based on our experiences from the semester, in prope. Now, how are we going to do that? We're going to perform this week, not today, but this week we're going to perform what's called a round table. A round table. Now, have you heard of the term round table? If you have... What do you think a round table, what is characteristic of a round table? Any ideas? It's like a, a 
debate between? It's kind of a debate. Mm. Or is okay. Or Go ahead. Or, or I think it's it's some it's uh, like attack when you share your ideas, but without attack. I'm sorry. Without a what was the last word you said? Oh, attacker. I don't know how to ah, say it. Without attacking some? Yes. Right. So so this is, a round table is a little bit different than a debate, all right? And even in a debate, we don't want to attack the person, right? But um, we want to attack ideas, right? So a debate is like saying, okay, my position is the best and this is why, right? And the other team is saying the the opposite. No, my idea is better and this is why. A round table is a little bit different. It is a talk, right? It is a talk. Uh, anyone else have some additional ideas to to uh, contribute here to what is characteristic? It is a talk. What else can you say about a round table? Any ideas, any additional ideas about what a round table might be and how would it be different maybe than from a debate? Any thoughts? Um, oh, I don't know, but Maybe it is uh, everyone is uh, going to uh, going to show their ideas, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how to say. It. Uh, <laughs> well, let, let me think. I I think I I. I mean, you're on the right I, track, Adan. You're on the right track. It's like you're sharing your ideas. All right, so. How how would you go about sharing your ideas? Let's let's expand that idea. And what would it look like? Um, you know, what would it sound like? This exchange of ideas in a roundtable. And this is for Adan or or anyone else. How how would you so in a debate, yeah go uh, sorry. go ahead in a debate uh, <laughs> someone is uh, someone is sharing their ideas and uh, in the other turn in the next turn uh, the other person is next but maybe in a round table uh, everyone from a team let's say a team I don't know. Uh, Everyone is sharing their ideas, and um, and maybe the other team say uh, the opposite. Um, but I don't know if this is oh well, maybe because of the table here in the image or in your screen, uh, maybe everyone is sharing their ideas. Just just like this, not like in a debate, but just like. Uh, a brainstorming, maybe a brainstorming, maybe. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. All right. That's so, good. right. So, so you mentioned just looking at this at my screen, you see that well, there it happens to be a round table. In fact, that's where the this idea of round table comes up. If you compare this to a debate, usually a debate is on one side of the. You know, room, for example, you have one team on the other side, you have another team, you're actually facing each other, you're looking at each other face to face, and it's a back and forth, right? About, okay, my, my, <clears throat> excuse me, my, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> yeah, so when you have a debate, your side is better, your, your argument is, should be stronger than the other. It's a competition, right? Who's going to win the debate? But in a round table, just physically look at how they're positioned, right? So in a round table, the table is round and they're looking and facing 
each other. All of them are facing each other. That's one thing. Now, I don't know if you if you've guys uh, have watched these roundtables with actors. They're really interesting. And if you haven't, I highly recommend that you uh, that you watch some of these, right? And even choose ones with your favorite actor. Uh, but they're really insightful. They're really informative. They're interesting because they talk about all kinds of um, you know situations and experiences they've had they've as uh, actors. But here you'll notice, right, that this gentleman here with the the beige jacket, <clears throat> he is the moderator. And so he's asking questions. He is facilitating the discussion. So he's asking questions to the actor sitting around the table. So there's really no structure. This person who's asking the question <clears throat> is um, really open to you know asking any type of questions. Probably these actors have no idea which questions are going to be asked. And... There's really like, it's not like, okay, this person goes first and then this person and this person. No, he's just going to call on people at random. He's just going to select someone. And then maybe another actor joins in after one actor has provided information. So it's an informal discussion. All right. So this is one key characteristic of a roundtable that's going to be different than from a debate. A debate's very formal. Right? First, you do this. Remember all the rules that we talked about in debate, right? Uh, an intro, an outro. First, this person has an initial argument. It's very structured. But a roundtable is not structured. It's very informal in that sense. So our task this week is to, to create a roundtable discussion, right? To have an opportunity to have a roundtable discussion and, you know, this is a listening and speaking class, so our focus really is to how can we get a good conversation going around, around the table, right? You might you hear the expression, we're going to sit around the table and chat. We're going to sit around the table. And it comes from this idea of a round table discussion and just having a discussion. Imagine you're at the uh, kitchen table, the di dining room table. Let's say you're, you're eating dinner with your family or friends, and you're just having a casual conversation. It's very much like that, except here we have specifically a person asking certain questions. All right, so this is what we're going to try to achieve this. In fact, we are going to achieve this task, this performance task, having a round table, and really focusing on ICTs, information and communication technologies, right? And our experiences, our reflection, what do we think? And how do we actually provide feedback? Provide feedback. So a round table events with the use of feedback. Now, this term feedback is an interesting one. What comes to mind? How would you define feedback? Maybe your your um, you know maybe uh, your teachers have used this term in class. But what do you think of when you think of the word feedback? Feedback is to give your opinion about something to get better. I like that. It's your opinion about something in order to get better. I like the last part of that especially. Right? The intention of providing feedback is to get better, is to improve, right? If it's not, if it doesn't have the intention to improve, then it's not constructive. Now, here we have, I'm going to watch a short video. We're going to share this video. I'm going to have to probably stop sharing my screen and share it again because, well, that's, that's what I do. Let's try this again. So I'm going to share my screen, make sure the audio is on, and let's take a look here. So when you get a chance, take a look at this roundtable. I shared this video in our Notion page just to show you a, a real-life 
uh, conversation. Uh, he's sharing and saying, hey, we're going to have a roundtable event to discuss. And I want you to pay close attention when you watch this. And you can watch this later. It's a very short video. But he's basically saying, look, we're, we need to get together because we need to talk about certain things. Right. And, and it's a very informal type of situation. But he's basically saying, we need to get together. And I want your opinions about something. And that's what roundtables are really good at doing. But when we offer feedback, because this is going to be another part of our performance task when we do our own roundtable event, is looking at how we can provide feedback. So I want to watch this video together with you guys, and we'll break it down. But I want you to, to take some notes, and there are some key points, some key factors in providing feedback that I think applies to our performance task this week. Now, just so you know, this is a video from Toastmasters. If you're familiar with Toastmasters. This is just a service. It's a company that helps professionals uh, do um, better presentations to be able to really come across and have really impactful presentations. It's, and it's a company that dedicates themselves to that to that goal to help to help people give better presentations okay so that's what this video this is where it's coming from but let's take a listen to here and we're going to look for some key aspects of feedback so again have some notes ready and let's see what she has to say Now she says here how to give feedback. There's a good way to give feedback and a poor way to give feedback. So again, this is going to be the true intention of this video is what does it mean to give good feedback? What does it mean to give feedback that's not constructive? That's maybe um, that's not motivational. So let's take a listen. So what's the goal, before we go into the golden rule, what's the goal of giving good feedback? What did she say there in the video? It's, uh, it's help a person to improve their skill. That's right. It's to help others to improve their skills. So that's correct. So have some, write that down someplace, right? This is really the intention, the true intention, or tr the true goal of providing better Feedback is to improve someone's skills. Always offer your opinion in a way that you would like others to share their opinions with you. All right, what did she say there? How would you paraphrase that? Share your opinion. Um, How? How would you share your opinion? Uh, in a way, you, uh, you would want uh, you would like to receive uh, their opinion about you or about your uh, I, what you are trying to prove. That's right. Everyone, and you don't have to, you can mute your mic or if you want, but because we have a lot of us, we're obviously, I won't be able to hear each one of you, but I want you to just mute your mic. I'm going to give you 30 seconds and just paraphrase what this lady just said what Adan just said. And Adan can say it again to himself, but repeat it. How would you just how would you paraphrase what that person said? And I'll and I'll do the same. And I'll do mine out loud since you can hear hear me say it. Provide feedback in a way that you would like to receive feedback. And you put it in your own words. Say it out loud. Make sure you can hear you, yourself. Don't say it like in your mind thinking about it, say it out loud. You can mute your mic. Otherwise, we'll hear a lot of people at once. Teacher. Yes. Teacher. It's like the, the phrase that is, uh, don't do the thing that you don't, that you don't, you, no, that you wouldn't like that they do to you. Exactly. Something like do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Something like that. That's right. That's exactly right. 
It's the golden rule, right? Is treat others how you would like to be treated. You think you could say it like that? Now, she says something here about privacy, right? And, and, and when to provide feedback, when is it best to do it privately? When is it best maybe to do it publicly? And this is something I want us to think about a lot this week, because what we're going to do is we're going to be sharing feedback publicly. So if there is something that you feel is best expressed privately, then probably this is not the best place to do that. Now, I would encourage you to, of course, do it privately, right? If it's more one-on-one -on -one with a certain teacher, because we're going to be providing feedback this week to all probate teachers, your, your three, I guess, uh, probate teachers from this semester. All right, so we've done a, an activity similar to this in the past where I've asked you to share a reflection that would be shared with the teachers in Prope. This is going to be a similar activity because it's important that we hear from you guys your, your feedback. And this is going to be part of this week's task. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If there's something that you feel is best expressed privately then um, then probably this performance task, I wouldn't include it in this performance task, although I would encourage you to have the confidence to share that constructive feedback with your teachers, whether it's me or any other teacher, right, privately. Okay, but again, it's not going to be part of this activity. Okay, key, key takeaways, what she's saying here. Any, anyone want to share? Well, maybe uh, say something that that person have, uh, has done well, uh, like uh, focusing in those good things that that person uh, has already done. That's right. Exactly. Right. So if, if we're going to say something uh, negative, it needs to be part of something that has already been mentioned that's positive, right? Because again, this is not a like, oh, this is horrible, 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 and we're just going at the person with all negative comments. No, it needs to be part of some positive comments as well because it's important. If we know what works for you guys, what you like, some of your preferences, what's working for you, right, then that helps us also. It informs teachers to know, okay, well, we can do more of this or we can do more of that. Now, she's going to talk about some things here that are not going to apply so much to our, our performance task, although it's very important. So if you're, if you're going to meet with someone, then what she says here is going to be relevant. Um, take notes, but make a note to yourself that, that this particular point will not be directly related to our performance task for this week. And let me, let me go ahead and tell you what I'm going to go ahead and speak for all of your propate teachers, okay? What we want is to hear from you about how we can improve the educative experience, your experiences meeting either in real time, uh, outside of class. I mean, everything that's related to the classroom experience that you've, ex that you've experienced this semester this is what we want to know to, to improve, right? To, to really see if we're doing everything we can to create the environment that works for you, right? That helps you achieve your educational goals. Never say never. Third point, make sure this is a really important aspect. Now, I want to add one thing here, okay? So basically, she's saying avoid absolutes. Absolute. 
this always happens. This never happens. All of us, right? So try to avoid absolutes. Always, never are good examples. I would also add to this, and please add this to your notes. Avoid the pronoun we. All right, I don't want um, our discussions in this performance task, I don't want anyone assuming a spokesperson role. I want this to be an individual sharing of ideas. So, so try to avoid the pronoun. This is really important. Try to avoid the pronoun we. Uh, we, would, we like to do this or we like to do that. No, it's I like to do this. I like to do that. All right, so uh, it's very important that this is an individual sharing. It's a reflection, right? But it is intended to be on your own personal experience, your own personal opinion. Okay, the last point, focus on the performance, not the performer. Now, performance in our case, this is the... It could be from, well, what do you think before I say? What, what, how does this relate to us before we listen to what she has to say? What do you think performance refers to in our particular context? Uh, teaching. The performance would be teaching. Okay, so it could be certainly okay. teaching the behaviors of your teachers, what else could it mean? Teacher. Yes. Performance is not like a um, concierto. It could be. Yes, you could have, you know, your favorite music group perform is the verb, yeah. right? And their performance. It's like a presentation, huh? It's like a presentation. It could be, it could be a presentation, it could be a musical performance, it could be a, a dance performance. But in our context, besides teaching, because teaching could be a performance also, what other performance would relate to our specific context? Performance is the way that the performers are going to share their ideas, are going to present what they think. All right, so the notice that we, we use the term performance task, right? And the word performance is even in, in the, uh, you know, the title, the, the, the key term, right? <laughs> okay. But think okay. of more broadly, because you're giving feedback to teachers, performance can also be, in general, the, the performances of the students, the actual behaviors, the activities, the tasks that the students do also. So think of performance not only in terms of what the teacher does, but also what students, what you guys do or did in the past tense, right? What you did this semester, what the teacher did this semester or didn't do this semester? What did the students not do this semester? All right, so think of the performance for the purposes of our performance task is what the teacher did and what you guys did. Obviously, the performer here can be either the teacher and or the students. All right, before we listen to what she has to say, what do you think or how do you think giving feedback can be motivational? Any tips? Because uh, you, you say good things about the performance, but, well, while you are giving like your feedback, you can add comments as you can get better. Or I know you you did a good, but you have to get better this part. No. All right. And what's the word? We have a word for that. What would what word would you use to 
that means what you just said? Mm. Or anyone? Motivate? Motivation? Mm, yeah, it could be motivation. There's another word that I'm thinking about. No, it is just that, like a phrase, you can do it. Yeah, I mean, certainly that, that you can say that. You can, uh -huh, but we have actually, we have a word in English that means what you guys are, are saying, that what you're describing. And it starts with an E. Inspiration? Inspiration? Anybody else? Now you say E, but E. Uh huh. No. Yeah, E in English. Sorry, teacher. I said I said in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Encour encouragement. Encouragement. So you you can encourage others. You can encourage the person who you're providing feedback. Right. Let's listen to what she has to say here. Now, because obviously we're not going to be seeing each other face to face, right? Um, the eye contact, although it's very important, um, what we need to do is have, uh, in this case, because we're not even going to be in a round table, right? So we're actually going to be looking at the camera. So let's translate that to our context. Look at the camera. And this is one of the hardest things to do because even as I'm speaking, I'm I can glance up at the cam the, the small camera on my computer, but it's really hard to look at a little bitty camera because the camera is very small and, you know, realize that looking at that, I'm broadcasting out to all of you, right? So it's very important to make sure that you're focusing. And, and if you're on a computer, hopefully your webcam or the, com the, the camera on your computer is just above your screen. So if you need to look down at notes or something, it's not like a big change, right? Hopefully it's just glancing, using your, you know, glancing up at the camera, but uh, make sure that you do maintain eye contact. Also, I want you to pay close attention to your nonverbal communication. Now, what do I mean by nonverbal communication? And I'd like to hear from some folks who haven't had a chance yet to share their ideas. Any, what do you think? What, what do I mean by nonverbal communication? Uh, can I teacher or I let someone else? Well, let's, let's, let's give some others a, an opportunity first. And if no one chimes in, right, well, you can speak. But uh, I, w I really want to try to get more people involved in the conversation. So what do you guys, what do you guys think? Those of you who haven't shared nonverbal communication. It could be like uh, or facial expression. That's right. What would be an example of a facial expression? Um, maybe or eyes. Like sometimes we do some expressions only with our eyes, like rolling or something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You're rolling your eyes. You're looking away. Uh, you're looking up at the ceiling or at the floor, right? Certainly. A lot has to do with the eyes, looking at someone's eyes and maintaining kind of relates to maintaining eye contact with the camera. What's another example of... Facial expression or another type. Like body expressions. All right. So before we, we go on to body expressions, we'll come back to that. All right. But let's 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 discuss and exhaust all of the different ways that we can express ourselves with our face, facial expressions, all right? So eyes, certainly, that's a big part. But that's not the only 
type. What's another type of, what's it also involved in one's facial expression? Like dirty looks and all of that. And, and what would be uh, involved, and I'm, I'm looking for very specific parts of the face, right? What would be involved in a, a dirty look? Smile. Smile. Your mouth. We got our eyes. We say a lot with our eyes. We smile. And this is one of the hardest things to do also because like you're by yourself, right? Or, you know, maybe you're in a room where, you know, your family's all over, right? They're passing in front of you, a lot of distractions, the washing machine's going on, somebody's washing dishes, somebody's cleaning the living room and everything just, you're looking around and but it's really about how you're transmitting yourself through the camera. And this is actually a good exercise because when you're face to face with someone, sometimes it's easier, right? You're at school or, you know, you're in a context where it's a little bit easier to to have that contact. But what you what you show in your mouth as far as smiling, smiling can go a long way. Really. Even if you feel silly, you're sitting there going, hmm, smiling for maybe you feel like no apparent reason, but it really matters, especially when you're speaking. And if you can force yourself to smile, it has an effect on the way that you communicate and even how you think. There's been a lot of research that, that says, you know, if you just walk around smiling all the time, whether you, if it's forced or not, you're, you're actually going to feel happier and have a better day by forcing yourself to smile, right? It's actually, it's not like, oh, I'm happy in my mind, and now I'm going to smile to express that happiness. It's going the other way, saying, I'm going to force a smile, and that is going to, over time, impact my mind and my happiness, all right? So it's kind of part of that psychology. And so smile, Especially when you're speaking and you're part of you're doing your part of your performance in your video and you're speaking, smile, uh, eye connection. Make sure you have eye contact with the camera, right? And body, other forms of nonverbal communication. What you do with your hands. If you if you like to move your hands around, make sure it's not a distraction. Be careful with your hair that you're not curling your hair when you're talking or you're you know doing all of this and trying to speak and you're doing all these other outside distractive types of movements right that impact how you come across and this is what this is about how do you come across expressing a message expressing an idea follow these five guidelines and you'll be able to help others improve skills so they can reach major life goals all right five guidelines all right so to review what was the first guideline and you can type it into the chat and you'll jump right in with your microphone Speaker. Yes. I, I remember, I know, I wrote it, but I don't, I don't find my phone. But it was like to, I remember once that it was uh, to know what the person wants to be feedback. Like, I want to improve this skill. And I tell that, for example, to my teacher, and he already knows what I, I want to improve. All right. That was one. Okay. So can someone type that into the chat? A summary of what that what she just mentioned? What's another tip? One of the five tips, another suggestion. Never say never. Never say never. Avoid absolutes. If someone can type that into the chat. I need some I need uh, someone to type these into the chat so we can review and remember the main points of the video to improve skills. Okay, another one. 
Never say never. You can also call this avoid absolutes. So do not, do not say absolutes, all right? Any other tips mentioned in the video? Right, follow the golden rule. And what is the golden rule? Um, helping, I, sorry, sorry. <laughs> helping others uh, improve their, their skills. Right, but what's the, the golden rule? How would you explain the golden rule? Uh, sorry, um, I, I couldn't hear you. Or I will. The golden rule, how would you express, what does it mean to follow the golden rule? Right, and Fernando says, share your opinion in a way you would like to receive it. Exactly. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Right? Treat others like you would like to be uh, treated. Okay, very important, golden rule. All right, any other tips that they mentioned in the video? Right, that's a good one. Jazz, focus on the performance, not the performer. Remember, for our case, the performance can be either the teaching performance, of course, but it could also be your performance as a learner, as a student. Right, and Andrea says, don't say we. Right, so this would be part of, I categorize this kind of part of never say never, but also never say we. This is an individual type of reflection that we're going to be participating in. All right, any other tips, any other points made? Did we cover them all? I wrote it, another teacher. All right. Say things in privacy, right. This was related to another uh, tip. But if anything is going to be that needs to be private, then uh, you're encouraged to do it, but it's not going to be part of this performance. So part of what this task that we're going to focus on, guys, this week is learning what to say, what we should say, what we can say, but also equally as important is knowing what we shouldn't say or how we shouldn't act when we're providing feedback and we're doing it in a round table event. All right. So I know we spent a lot of time today talking about this, but I want to kind of set the stage. I want to provide a framework, an idea about where we're going. And we're going to be talking about these points throughout the week and working and working together to to really understand what all these points mean in a real performance, right? This is a real performance because you're being asked to share feedback to your teachers, right? And we, we want to do it in the best way possible. We want it to be informative. We want it to be honest. We want it to be respectful. We want it, we want it to be productive, okay? So that's our goal for this week. All right, this is our what we're going to end up completing for this week. Now, I shared with you guys in, I think, Microsoft Teams, and I'll share it here also in Notion. Here are the teams for this week. All right, now, hopefully you can see my screen. You can also look at this list. I posted this uh, list this morning in Microsoft Teams. We're going to have, it looks like, eight teams. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Teacher, creo que María de la Cruz ya no está. Okay. So I understand. So, so this is, if you guys are... All right, so there should be five listed. Now, if someone is not in your group, whether they dropped the class or for personal reasons, they just were not able to participate this week, um, then, then the roles that we're going to talk about this week, I'm going to ask that you uh, cover and assume more than one role. Okay, and this will make sense when we talk about the roles. Um, but... 
this this week is let me say first that it's very important that we work together this week. This is one of those weeks where working together in our teams is going to make up most of what we do in our classes, right? Again, whether it's in class or outside of class, um, it's going to be really important that we all work together. If anyone is not able, if you know right now, for if you have a personal reason, you're like, oh, there's no way I can participate, or we know that somebody dropped a class, dropped the class, or is just not coming, then the rest of the teammates need to pull together and equally distribute the roles so that you are having the same performance. Okay, so um, so let me just put that out there. We've got eight teams, and we have five members. Now, I want to. I don't want to go into the details yet about how what the roles are going to be. We'll talk about the roles. We'll have plenty of time to work on those roles, but um, for now, I'll just say that. Okay. So again, if anyone is watching this video later or in the class and knows that they're not going to be available for the rest of the week, I hope that's not the case. I hope everyone participates. But if, if for some reason you know there's just there's no way it's going to happen, please communicate to your teammates right away, right? Because it's not fair to the rest of the teammates that you're you're not saying, well, you know, you're not participating equally throughout the week. And we're going to be needing to work together, all of us, with you in your teams every single day this week, Monday through Friday. So this is a, these are our teams. As always, Team 1 will be in the Group 1 channel. Team 2 will be in the Group 2 channel in Microsoft Teams and so on. Um, we're in week 14, so when you go into those groups, we'll create a, a folder for this week, week 14. All right, so those are our teams. Now, the rest of today, what I'd like to do, actually, is very much related to creating a questionnaire, because before we get into the the actual round table. I want us to come together and develop a questionnaire, an online questionnaire, a list of questions to ask. So, yes. I have a really uh, quickly question. Yeah. Um, so, we're going to join in, in our groups and we're going to talk about the topic, the technology. And in that uh, round table, we're going to give our feedback to another members in the in that moment, oh, okay. or? All right, sorry. Yeah, so Tanya, so here here's the thing. And I know that this is, um, I don't want this to be any more confusing than, than it has to be, all right? I, us, we are going to work together day to day throughout the week to complete the task. So, so far, I haven't really given you any instructions about what to do in your groups, except for what I'm about to say right now. All right, so um, I want you to trust that we're going to work together, and I want you to try to do each individual step not knowing all the steps that are going to be required for this week. And I know that's that's difficult, right? We, we want to have all the tasks. We want to know right now exactly what we're going to do all week and um i'm going to i'm going to ask that we work differently that we work paso por paso one step at a time together and even though and just trust that we're going to get through it and we're going to understand it by the end what all the steps are going to be all right and there's a reason for that because I want us to work together in each of these steps. Each of these steps are really important. So the first step, all right? So to answer your question, we're not going to really do any of that. The first thing we're going to do in our groups today is I want us to get into the groups, go into an online meeting, and record it, as always. And I want us to think about questions 
that we can include in an online questionnaire. So I would create a Word document in your group, a shared Word document so that you can all access one document and discuss. Now discuss in English. These are This is an informal conversation. It's like, hey, okay, so what do you think? We can do this. Okay, what about this question? What about this question, right? So the first thing that I'm going to ask that you do today in your groups is to go into your groups, create an online session, create a shared document, and begin developing questions that you can include in an online questionnaire. Now, what kind of questions should you include? Well, you have a class in listening and speaking. You have a reading class. You have a writing class. You have a grammar class. And you have a culture class. Am I missing any? Uh, writing, maybe? No. Writing? Okay, did I miss writing? So, listening, speaking, reading, writing, grammar, okay. and culture. Right. All right, so you have class. Those are your classes in Prope. So, I would come up with a set of questions. Right? Now, maybe some of the questions are similar for both classes, but maybe they're not. But I would include sections. One section for listening and speaking. I think we can put our class into one section called listening and speaking. One section for reading, one section for writing, one section for grammar, and one section for culture. And then come up with a list of questions that you can ask. Now, this should be a group effort. This should be a conversation where you're talking to each other and say, hey, what do you think? What do you think about this? But we should have five members in our team. How many classes do we have? How many classes do you have? Five. I think you have five, all right, if I didn't miscount. Speaking, reading, writing, grammar, culture. So, and again, I'm, I'm counting listening and speaking as one, one class. So, I would assign a role. Each of you take a role. One of you be listening, speaking. One of you can take a reading section or class. One of you can take a writing. One of you can take grammar. Now, if one of your team members is not there, communicate with your other team member if it's just a matter of your team member not being able to attend today, but she says, no, I can, I'll help later or I'll do it tomorrow or, well, fine, then work together, right, and make it happen. But th this is why I'm going to ask everyone again, please communicate with your team members. If you know, as soon as you know that you can't participate or can't be there for something, please communicate that with your team members. Right and try to work together because again it gets it's difficult if someone is not communicating, right? So that's the expectation I have from you guys is that you're going to communicate and work out those obstacles if some come up, all right? And and if if I need to intervene and talk and help facilitate and make decisions, fine. But I want you guys first to try to work things out yourself. Choose who's going to do what, but talk to each other and figure out, okay, which questions can we ask, can I ask, or we ask collectively for each of the sections. You decide how you want to work. If you want to work total, total, um, completely openly, like you all make decisions for all of the questions for all of the sections, great, do that. If some of you want to say, no, let's divide up and we'll each one do each section and then we'll come back and then we'll talk about our decisions about the questions that we could ask and then change it. We're checking for grammar. We want grammatically correct questions. So this is where you can help each other, correct each other respectfully Right, and help each other with the grammar to make sure that we have good grammar questions right, in our questionnaire. This is what I would like for us to work on in a Word document for the rest of today's class. This is all I want us to work on. 
Now, the speaking part of this is you talking to each other. And I may not be in your uh, your meeting the whole time, or I may not even get into your meeting today. And, you know, you could say, well, he's not in here, so I guess we can speak Spanish. This is where I want you to really encourage each other to speak English. Feel comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. Right? It's hard to do. Speak English. Encourage each other. If you guys are speaking in Spanish, then this activity is much less productive. It's not, what's the point? We know you can speak Spanish. You speak Spanish very well. All right, so help each other work on creating our questions. This is the only thing I want us to complete for today are these questions. Tomorrow, we're going to take what we did today and we're going to do something else. We're going to continue. All right, so let's break into our groups. Are there any questions about what we're about to do for today only? Any questions? Just, just a quick, uh, quick uh, question. You mentioned something about the subjects, uh, about culture, writing, and reading. Um, but I don't know if this is related to this, this activity in particular. Okay, so, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be asking questions about technology. Remember that this week the focus is technology. All of our classes, I'm assuming, are online, right? Unless somebody, you know, uh, lied to me, I think all of our classes are online. So in some way, some fashion, all of you are using technology in all of the classes that you've had this semester. So the questions need to be reflective, re reflexive, right? They need to be questions about um, how the use of technology has worked or not, right? But maybe specific questions, right? In each of your classes, right? And, you know, generally speaking, the, the you would have questions like, well, how has uh, information and communication technologies, you know, how are they, how do they, what do they look like in, in the reading class and the writing class? But ask reflective questions about what is working, what it, what is not working. Like, how, how do you feel about, and try to be as specific as, as possible, right? Thinking about how the teacher interacts with you guys, how the content is presented in the class, how you guys work together with the technologies, because everything's related to technology since we're all online. So just think about the things that you do in each of the classes and try to come up with specific, reflective, quite reflexive questions that relate to those types of activities that relate to technology, but that are uh, asking for an opinion because that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually work together to ask the questions and then later on, we're going to be answering the questions. All right? So I could easily come up with the questions myself, but they wouldn't be, I don't think, the best types of questions. I want you to come up with questions that you can ask yourselves later, right? But right now we're not going to answer the questions, right? So don't worry about answering the questions. We just want to think about asking the questions for each of your classes. Again, think specifically. There are, there are um, specific aspects of each of your classes probably that are, that are different. Maybe some are, are similar, but think about first What's different about the reading class? What's different about listening, speaking? What's different about the writing class? What's writing different about the culture classes? And then how can I come up with, I don't know, three or four questions for each class that are reflexive based on technology and based on a specific type of activity or behavior or task or experience that is related to that particular course. Okay, does that does that help? Does that make sense, Alan? 
Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, maybe I have some other questions, but maybe uh, with, with the time or with the uh, yeah, the time of, of the activity, uh, I will. Uh, I don't know. I will know much better what we're gonna do. Right. So just make sure in your shared Word Online document that you have one document per team. And then in that document, break it down into your classes, the, the sections. And I and let's 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 think about I don't know three or four questions per class. Two, you know, three or four for listening, speaking. Three or four uh, questions for reading. Three or four questions for writing, and so on. All right, and then we'll have. So for example, mm -hmm, go ahead. Uh, so, for example, in the reading class, uh, maybe um, how do you how do you look for uh, works that you don't understand? Ah, well, we use that dictionary. For example, is that okay? Uh, like, all that right. Great? Yeah, I I would prefer that all of the questions are right. about someone's opinion. So you might start each question like, "How do you feel about?" looking up new words using a dictionary in reading class or an online dictionary in reading class. How do you feel in your writing class when your instructor leaves feedback as a comment in your Word document? For example, right? Now, I'm just, I'm just guessing because I don't know if your teacher leaves comments in your Word document. This is where you think, okay, what specific... You know, how does the teacher, you know, interact with us? How does the teacher interact with the content? How do we interact with each other in the writing class, for example? And then what kind of questions can I ask? But they're all about, well, what do you, how do you feel about this? What do you think about this? And you can change it. You don't always have to say, how do you feel? 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 You can say, how do you think about this? You know, um, are you, do you like when... This, this, and this, and then explain why. I, if obviously we want to try to have open questions, right? But you could say, you know, what do you think? Do you like when they do this? Okay, why? Or you could just say, why? Why do you like it? Right? It just depends on, you know. I have no problem with having yes, no questions if you have a why afterwards, where they explain themselves. You can say yes or no, and then explain. That's fine. Okay. But they're all reflective. It's not like I don't want questions that are just based on behavior. Like, all right, how does your teacher, you know, how does your teacher do this? No, it's always about, should be, how do you feel? How do you think about this? Um, is this the best way to do it? Explain why. Is this the best way to do this certain thing? Why? Why or why not? And not talking directly, right? Like mentioning or pointing uh, the teacher is specifically like no. Well, listen, listen. This is um and y yeah. You don't have to. There's really no reason to mention the teacher's name because we know who the teacher is. I I'm not trying to. We're not going to be uh, sneaky and try to be like you know trying to fool anybody, right? That's why later when we think about the answers, we need to be really careful about being professional and objective and productive and constructive. We, and that's what I want to help you guys learn. Uh, this week's activity is really about how can we be respectful? How, what words can we use? Because sometimes we don't know, and it's not like it's our intention to be disrespectful, but sometimes as language learners, and I'm as guilty in Spanish as, as anyone, right, is Sometimes I come across, like in Spanish, um, disrespectful, and it's not my intention, but I'm just using the wrong words, right, or, or the, the way that I say it. This is what this activity this week sets out to do. I want to help you think about the importance of the words that we use and how we come across. Okay, but again, don't worry about the answers right now. We're thinking about only the questions working together, talking to each other, and working together collectively in one Word document where you can create these questions. And we, we'll take a look at them. I'll look at those, give you some feedback, 
and we'll look at it together as a group and I'll look at it as your small groups so that we get a really good idea about what kind of questions are good questions. Speaking of questions, any other questions? Is it a little bit clearer, guys? Yeah. yeah. And don't worry about what we're going to do all week, right? We're just let's right. just focus on this one step. We're going to take baby steps here uh, throughout the process. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic, guys. Go ahead and divide up into your groups. Begin developing your shared Word Online document with your questions. And again, please divide it up into sections based on the five classes that you're taking this semester. All right. If you guys have any questions, of course, jump right in and ask away. And I'll be checking my chat also if you send me uh, a message. All right, guys. And we'll come back at 940 to close the class. Okay. Did you... okay. So we'll uh, finish for today, guys. Uh, try to finish uh, as best you can uh, the questions for tomorrow. We'll continue taking what we completed today in today's task as we work this week. Again, trying to focus on creating a good roundtable event where we can share our thoughts and our opinions on how technology is currently being used this semester in all of your appropriate classes. Any questions, guys, about what we did today? Well, me. All right, very good. So uh, we'll go ahead and stop for today. If you guys do have questions outside of class, of course, send me a message. Otherwise, tomorrow we'll continue uh, with the task. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good day today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Teacher. Thanks, teacher. Thanks, guys. Teacher. Yes. I just want to tell you that I already posted my video on Figure. Uh, okay. Could you could you send me a? Uh, it, it was this from which task is this for the famous person yeah. task? Yeah, the famous person. I was missing for reply to the question that Adam. Okay. Asked me. All right. Could I you? already answered. You're coming. Okay, great. Uh, could you send me um, a message in Microsoft Teams with the link, please, to your response uh, video? Yes, teacher. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.